<laughs> I can already tell this is gonna be a raunchy ass show. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Tadaima, a Terrace House Drunk Cast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I am Robert Scarpanito, and I am joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. <laughs> and and Jack Cepeda. <laughs> And Colin Sparling. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Kompai, everybody! Woo! All right, wow. so let, let me provide you all some context here, all right? We've been recording for 45 minutes, and I'm pretty sure when I edit this, this is where we're going to start. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stuff before we hit record and start the show is, like, high-tier Patreon-level shit. Like, high-tier. <laughs> Guys, okay. I, I look even more pasty on camera than I usually do. That's true. So let me let's provide some context because I'm sure you're very confused. This week we are doing our drunk cast because we turned 21, baby, into the 21st episode. Happy and birthday to us. Thanks. Happy thanks, birthday Shohei. to us. That's all. Oh, we're done? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're getting crunk, or perhaps maybe more accurately, we're already pretty uh. crunk. Yes. Uh, I, I, I think I, <laughs> to add some external context, let's oh. let's go around and say what everyone's been drinking and or is drinking. Colin, do you want to start us? Sure. I think I I think I was smart and stayed on brand with the whole hard kombucha that I discovered at the grocery store the other day. Um, it's a stuff called Kyla hard kombucha. Um, and I was like, you know what? That sounds like the most hipster thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Um, I'm going to buy that just because it's not the greatest tasting thing in the world. It's really not. I've had good kombucha, but this hard kombucha isn't really doing it for me. Uh, but you know what? I'm here. I'm ready to go. And I have some whiskey to satiate otherwise. Your My gut man. flora is fucking fucking you, crunk right now. You know, yeah, what, what is it? What is it called? <laughs> like the fucking the, the health, the really big health people are like. You know, Probiotics. My, yeah, like my fucking stomach biome is so healthy right now. Oh, you're gonna shit Dude. good tonight, my friend. Jack, you're what have that, you what have you been drinking? You're just filled with that good bacteria, bro. So <laughs> I'm double fisting it. On one hand, I got when you feel like spending thirty five dollars on a male sip on a adult sippy cup Yeti. So this is full of cola. I got a liter of cola and some Bacardi rum Classic. and I'm out of breath for some reason. <laughs> Hey, drinking's then, a hard sport. And then on the other hand, I got my Dickie's big yellow cup, the big cup. See, it even says right there. Yeah. And um, if you're in Texas, you know about Dickie's barbecue. Anyways, um, this is full of orange juice and Bacardi. So I am I'm well equipped to handle whatever you're going to throw at me, Robert. You fucker. So sounds like you've been pretty batty tonight, my friend. Man. And this okay. episode's been sponsored by Dickie's. Daily, yes. what have you been drinking? Um, I have been, I'm up here in Seattle, so I've been drinking <laughs> Rambling Route Cider from Yakima, mm. which is a place in Washington. I it's think... not a made up word, as it would suggest. I believe <laughs> Actually, Yakima, they, grow, they grow a lot of hops. Yeah, Yakima produces 75% of the country's hops. Whoa. Holy shit. Yep. Yeah. I had no idea. I learned that well, from my I'm... roommate who works at a bar, a, a brewery in Seattle. Yes. And honestly, I wouldn't know that other one <laughs> if I didn't work at said brewery. Well, I'm drinking some of them, and it's yeah. delicious. She's drinking and, some Yakima. And yeah. I'm on my third cider. Yeah. And oh, you haven't moved your fourth? Very much a lightweight. I thought you got to the fourth one. No, it's it's sitting here on my desk unopened. Got if you, you hear a ch then that's what it is. Okay, so Beautiful this is the sour. first time ever getting drunk with Daly. And granted, I'm, a, I'm, you know, what, 600,000 miles, however far away I'm across the country. 525,600 <laughs> minutes. But anyway. damn it, is this not fun? Like, I had no idea Daly got so rowdy. And, and oh, howdy. How did she get rowdy? I so. guess I apologize in advance, y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. See, so a, get a little background Wait, here. Like, me who, and Colin, who, I think, are kind of similar on tolerance levels. Like, I feel like it takes a similar amount of alcohol to get 
he and I drunk. Robert is fucking damn near impossible to get drunk. He's just got them them Korean jeans up in him. Which fun fact? Drink. South South Koreans do drink the most per capita, even more than Ireland. Soju Hon is, thani. and I'm so not really? even Korean. Majide. Yeah, soju's no joke. Why oh yeah, he's it? Filipino. Yeah, I'm Filipino. <laughs> yes. Why isn't that a stereotype then? Because <laughs> Koreans work too hard. Ah. Hi. Ooh. Ooh, is that a, is that a fucking hit on Irish people, dude? <laughs> you know, I guess in a way, <laughs> <laughs> it's a slight. Oh, dude, microaggression, fam. That's so daily. You got speaking of genetics. You got your last name's Wilhelm, so you got some German in you, some Deutschland. I am, I'm very German. I'm very German and Irish. My dad's side is German. My mom's side is Irish. So it's so like fear and split. Guinness. So one would think that I were prepared for a drunk cast, but in actuality, I'm not at all. (laughs) I think you are the proper amount of prepared for this drunk cast. I have been drinking (sighs) some whiskey. (laughs) Thank you. I did did save that burp for that. (laughs) Sugoi. I've been drinking some shots of whiskey along with some... uh, Nice gin and tonic Ooh, thank you nice. yeah i know Ooh. i live now for the full leo nice. yes, i'm really worried that i just made this gin and tonic way too strong for the joke <laughs> but i'm gonna i'm hey. gonna live with that for the next however long until let it done. roll let it roll so yeah guys we're celebrating the 21st episode this is essentially a long big fucking thank you to everyone that has been listening so far for 20 episodes of tadai ma and maybe you know us from back in the day at tdp tiny disc podcast so yeah, so thank you guys, and we're just here celebrating. We're having a good time. This is a very lighthearted episode as we ramp up for part six coming out on international Netflix in the coming weeks, guys. It's going to be here like that. Hi, guys. Sober post-production Robert here. Just thought I'd uh, leave you a note since we did mention uh, part six is coming soon. We did find out, actually, last week, get hype, part six is dropping March 12th. So let's get excited. But for now, enjoy us getting very drunk for your amusement. Bye. Yeah, I definitely made this drink too strong. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. So this is totally, by the way, this is going to totally be a train wreck. So don't even expect anything less. As if our other shows aren't already a train wreck. This is just going to have that added layer of uh, motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) mosu akigazaimasu. See, anyway, we're making you think we're drunk. You want Jackson Pettis? Yep. <laughs> sure. Wait, who said that they were Jackson <laughs> I did. So, let's start off the show by talking about all the times the Terrace House folks were drinking. Because let's be mm. honest, they pretty much come pie like every episode. And also, come pie, everybody. Let's drink. Come pie. Come pie. Come pie. Right, uh, it's empty. Shit. I gotta open a new one. Get ready for the. Oh, all right. Let's go. Let's get the sound effect, Daily. Oh, nice. So yeah, Whoa, all the times that, <laughs> that the Terrace House folks were drinking. There were a lot of compies. One of my favorite ones, personally, was and we've talked about this on the show before. The Taka and uh, Shohei getting drunk and crying in each other's mm. almost arms. A lot of man tears shed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, real quick, real quick qualifier here, uh, Robert. Are we sticking to opening the doors or just all Terrace House drinking times? I think uh, we'll leave it open for everything, but don't maybe spoil it as much since we as a show have not covered opening your doors yet or okay. anything besides opening your doors. You know what I mean? Right. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Know you. Okay. Okay. So, well, yeah, those get, those men shed tears. They shed tears. I, I think it's very, I guess secure attractive when men shed tears because it's it speaks to something very secure in their own masculinity when they're allowed to shed their own tears and cry together it says something about stability you know Shohei and Taka talking together about their relationship and they really got to know each other very well they were very much best friends till the end of Shohei's time on Terrace House and beyond. Yeah, I I really liked it just because you know in America there's been a lot. I mean this has been less so recently, but there's been a lot of just like, oh you're a man, you shouldn't cry. You're a man, be tough. You know you're. Right. You mean toxic masculinity? Yeah, you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to bench a Ford, kid. 
Can't cry. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, I could bench a Ford. But now That's, I can only bench but maybe a quarter a quarter ton. Are you telling me you could literally bench like tons? Colin. A no, ton is... Sh- sh- for the sake of my masculinity, yes. <laughs> no, right. And also, you no. never cried. Not not even once. Nope. I can I can definitely attest to crying a Ford like two hundred tons. Let's go. I don't Same. mean to get so crying two hundred tons. I don't mean to get so emo here, but what's the, how do you tell the difference when you get older as an older guy, me in my thirties, right? How do you tell the difference between crying because you're you're so you know like in touch with your feminine side and so in touch with your emotions versus crying because you're so full of emotions that have not been addressed and so your cuppeth runneth over maybe this is a personal question wow this, oh, this okay. went right. way fucking deeper i feel so i feel like they're both one and the same okay and you here's think why. so here's why because the the man who cries after forcing it all down bottling it all up he cries because he got in touch with his quote unquote feminine side for the first time. He, for the first time realizes it's okay to have feelings as a man. And that's why he cries. For example, appreciate that. I I take that to heart. Now, for example, I was watching America's got talent. And for some reason, when that burn victim lady, that African American woman started singing and she had the voice of an angel fucking, it was like waterfalls when Noah dumped Mayu. Mm-hmm. It was like holy shit! I was just like, "Oh my god, this is the most beautiful thing ever!" And it's like my cheeks were like raining down. I feel like the I like down yeah. Today. It was like oh, it was so and beautiful, and I just couldn't stop. So you like tell me, something guys, in- be my shrink. <laughs> it's important to let out emotions, like even any kind of emotions it doesn't even have to be sadness it can be something like you know love or frustration or empathy mm-hmm. but like when you feel like crying that's literally the brain just saying like i i've had enough like yep. mm-hmm. we got to release this somewhere or another chemically so mm-hmm. yeah and i think and is. i think a big part of it too is maybe i need more um physical like exertion too like more exercise. I'd be the first one to admit I probably need more exercise than I'm actually getting in real life. But like maybe if I had that like uh what's it called? Like testosterone like kind of dump too, that might help. Yeah. I, I think that going back to Taka and, and Shohei, I think Yes. <laughs> please. What I, what I well what I've noticed is that um that Jap- like the the stereotypical thing when when people get drunk is right is like they tend to get a lot more emotional and and that's certain certainly true in a lot of situations, um, because you know that kind of lets loose your filter a little bit, uh, but the thing that I've noticed in, in Terrace House in general and also in the, in this conversation between Taka and Shohei is I've noticed that like Japanese people are, are in some situations willing to be a little bit more emotional, willing to be a little bit more open. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, where in like Americans, yeah, they're like they're not a af- they're af- they're willing to be open, um. But I think that there's just something about the bonds in Japanese culture that they're that they're not afraid to show. You know what I mean? Like I think they're le- just a little bit more forward about it. Uh, like this thing between Taka and Shohei being an example. See, Japanese culture is peculiar to me. Okay, because mm-hmm. when this is what I love about Terrace House. It shows what like it is to be amongst your peers kind of behind closed doors. I mean, I know they know that they're being taped and they're on this big show, but at a certain point, your guard has got to let down. And you just start to live your life regardless of the circumstances you're in, right? And that's when the best moments in Terrace House happen. So it's a weird juxtaposition between what I see at Terrace House and what I love about Terrace House versus what I see and know about Japanese culture. And granted, I've never been to Japan, but it's like, you know, we're talking about a place that will apologize if they're 14 seconds late with the train. It'll be a giant Twitter public apology. And it's like, when you go on the trains in Japan, it's like completely silent. Like everyone's just closed off. They just sit there with their eyes closed. They don't say anything. There's no like, so like when, you know what I mean? Like there's no interaction. Like when you're out on the street, it's just quiet and it's just sterile and it's just clean. And it's just like, you know, fit in, do what the crowd does, do what the flock does. So it's a weird, it's a weird juxtaposition. And I think that's what, is one of the major draws for me for Terrace House is you get to a peek kind of behind the curtain where Japanese people start to let their guard down a little bit. So I'll say as someone who's lived in both Seoul for a very long time, Seoul, Korea, and have spent a couple weekends in Japan, both in Tokyo and Okinawa, 
Uh, cities are nowhere near quiet, my friend. People talk, people sell shit to you. If you walk by a store that sells suits, like, you'll have a guy, like, I mean, it's not as racist as it is in Rush Hour 2, where that guy's like, cheap suits, cheap suits, and all he says is cheap suits over and over, but, like, people will try to talk to you, especially because they'll notice, like, really? oh, you're not from here, you're white, or you're not Korean, you're not Japanese, so, like, I'm going to sell stuff to you because you're foreign, maybe you're a tourist, and you're going to buy shit for the sake of buying it, but nonetheless, wow. like, cities are not, like, sure, they're collectivist cultures, right, they're all about, the, you know, the... The nail that isn't nailed in gets nailed down. I don't remember the idiom right now, but you know what I'm talking the about. The tall nail gets the hammer. That's it. The uh, nail that sticks out. Yeah. So that, that that is an idiom that, you know, those collectivist cultures live by, but that by no means means that they they run every day like probes or like It kind of seems <laughs> like, like that. Programs. It kind of seems like the Prodos. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? like, get in line, like, shut up, just do your thing. Yeah, no time. one no one feels programmed when you go to those cities. Like everyone feels very vibrant and fun and like if you go to a bar, the bartender isn't just like, What is your order, sir? Like For no, sure. they they're, they're real people. Alcohol can... is the great equalizer, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear that then. Yeah. There's definitely something to said about like i feel like on terrace house i've seen men be a lot more open with their feelings than i usually see on like primetime american television mm-hmm. like, i can agree don't with see that. that as much yeah I especially agree. tears like that's reserved for like last resort kind of things like someone died or like i'm talking about you know something very tragic whereas i think it should be allowed for men to cry over you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, a.k.a. you die. Mm. You know, I don't I don't know what's happening. I don't know where to go. And Taka agreeing and saying, you know, like, I, you know, I'm in my 30s and, you know, I got to take this next big step and I don't know where that is. And so seeing those kind of things like between Shohei and Taka are it's really, I guess, pure. Like, it still goes into the pure Terrace House mm. kind of vibe that I get from Terrace House. Like, everyone's very open and people make real connections. Whereas I feel like in American reality TV, it's all very much superficial. And if people are crying, it's very much because of feeling slighted by other people versus feeling connections to other people. Guys, yeah. I'll drink to that fucking come pie. Drink Let's to that. Come pie. So, Daly, oh, you've mm. unbeknowing, unbeknowingly, mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like that's a word that's a we word. say. Un- words and stuff. You've become my conduit now to the other side, to the bachelor side. So now all oh. my questions come to you. And so my question is, do guys cry on Western reality, on one of Western reality's largest shows? Is that a thing? Okay, so I have been every week watching... The Bachelor, which is populated by one man and numerous it, women trying his, to vie for his affection. His harem. It is. It's very much like that, especially the group dates. It's very uncomfortable. Mm. It's like, you know, whoever has the loudest personality is getting the most attention. Mm. And that, you know, discounts a lot of very, you know, considerable women that just aren't trying to be very loud and like literally jump on his back to get attention. Whoa, can I can I stop you there for a second? Group dates. Group dates are a thing <laughs> on yeah, they got the serious American here. Bachelor. Um it's it's really uncomfortable because you know they travel yeah, in the I'm bachelor sure. they start out in California and then they usually go to some exotic location, usually in Asia. They had, you know, a whole set in Singapore, but surely that was too expensive to maintain. So they moved on to Thailand and it's just them like moving through markets and like this one dude and 12 women surrounding him, like being like, hey, yeah, Colton. Oh, my gosh. We're so connected. Right. (laughs) Like surrounded by 16 other women. Um. So anyone who's an introvert is definitely an out in that situation. It's pretty unfortunate. But I forget what our original question was. No, no, no. Was. I was I was do, do, I do still, guys cry? No, no. Do guys no, no, cry? No, because I do men well, cry. I, I, do men well, cry. Yeah, the the fucking do men job. cry. 
Do men <laughs> cry? Dylan got solemn there for a second. I don't trust men if they don't cry <laughs> as a woman. Like, if men don't cry, I feel like they've bought into, like, this era of toxic masculinity enough that they've suppressed themselves enough that if anything that's going to be expressed, it's going to be explosive and preferably not violent, but maybe violent. Like, you got to express your emotions, and the They're most natural way yeah. to do so is by crying, and that's the least, you know impacting other people way of expressing emotions so like if you gotta cry do it it's very natural it's very cleansing hopefully it's not through violence or yelling or pain. you know anything else pain definitely yeah. so Thank daily you, robert daily so on the okay, bachelor. Wait, wait. Is, this, is this another question about the bachelor because we're not a bachelor podcast i'm just Jack. curious you we're guys cry i'm bachelor. waiting for the fucking answer oh my god <laughs> We're basically just asking like, if keep, the guy on keep, The Bachelor like, cries. Keep, there's just one guy on The Bachelor, so you're asking, does he cry? Yes! Does Todd cry? That's all I want to know. <laughs> I Colton, Colton occasionally gets slightly misty-eyed. That's it, though. That's okay. why I don't like him. So you don't trust him? He, I don't trust him because he doesn't cry. Really? Because several women has left him, and he's just been like, oh, man, yep. that sucks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Okay. Daily, daily, daily. Hold on. We're, I'll quit. We're, we're quick. Last tangent here. Can I take you to my nightmare? Can I welcome you to my nightmare that was 2011, 2010 ish, where I was dating okay. someone who okay. I thought there might potentially be long term ramifications with, potentially, in, okay. my, in my ignorance. And this person I was dating, think how torturous okay. this was, would shame me if I even maybe became a little like teary at all. Would That's like shame me. Fuck my dude. She would make me feel so shitty if I ever even had a like a tiny little like watery eye. That's, yeah. That's toxic. Was very, Karen. Was very vocal about it too. And would like shame me in public about it too. Uh, That's gross. Like imagine like you had a child with this person uh, and like you're teary eyed as your child yeah. is born and she's like you fucking pussy yeah, quit being a bitch. <laughs> suck it up yeah I'm giving that birth here shut so the fuck up yeah. shitty yeah let people feel things yes I agree let people feel yeah. things and I feel like Terrace House does that it lets people feel things yes and to, that's important to, to bring that back to the podcast that we're all about yes. Terrace House so what I really love and this isn't even related to them drinking is that even when people leave like that just feel that's that's a thing where even guys cry you know what i mean like i'll point at i'll point at hansan specifically from boys and girls in the city everyone fucking bawled their eyes out for that and i was like this is so <laughs> good or even uh like when when shohei leaves the show which despite your feelings about him about his his hook kissing abilities like the fact that he <laughs> the fact that he fucking wrote a song performed it in the most exclusive venue probably on the planet and and just like did a thing where it's like guys i wrote this song for you and you're the first people i'm performing it for and everyone mm. fucking tears up like even the guys even noah who i'm pretty sure faked it but whatever you know like, that was a really convincing fake if he faked it I rambling know, rose I just, I just feel like he didn't yeah i mean i mean he, he just, it wasn't you know. deserved at all no yeah, yeah but nonetheless like the fact that I mean, I'm glad that I live in a world now where I haven't been conditioned to think like, oh, Taka's crying at that. What a puss. What a bitch. What a right. Right. Man, I'm not I'm not a guy who's going to cry at that. That's stupid. Like, no. Mm. So to bring us back to point, does anyone else have any moments on Terrace House before drinking and they liked it? Hi. So one of my favorite moments, most iconic moments in opening new doors. Now, correct me if I have the personnel wrong here, but I know for a damn fact, Sana was there. It was early in her days in the house there, and I, I believe she went out, I want to say it was with Shohei and Taka, but I could be wrong. And it was that I'm, scene where they're stumbling in the s Japanese streets at night, and it's like empty. Like, I feel like a tumbleweed would have rolled by, but they're just like bar hopping, right? And that just, to me, was like, I was so, this is one of the, one of many scenes I'm so envious of in Terrace House. Like, I, I want to fucking be stumbling through some cobblestone streets in old style Japan going from bar to bar. Like, fuck, it just looks so cool. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, no. No, yeah. they were in, they were in Kyu Kuruzawa, which is the old town. And just drinking together as friends and yeah. nothing more. 
Yeah. And guess what? Men and women can be friends, and Terrace House proves that. Same. <laughs> I um. I, I mean, I'll say as someone who has done his share of drinking at nights through Itaewon in Seoul or through Hongdae, like, it's very fun drinking in Asian cities because, you know, like, like especially when you go to a district that's made just for, like, here's the nightlife, here's all the nightlife, it's unlike anything in America that I've yet to see. Do we want to go, do I want to, I guess I already did. Let me bring this up, Okay. Maybe guys and girls can be friends. Oh, maybe they can. Oh, we're going but, deep into this. Okay. Yeah, but hold on. Oh, but no. I mean, we're drinking now, right? Fuck it. Maybe oh, guys and girls can be friends. I'm willing to consider that as a possibility. But doesn't always, I like the two hander there, Robert. Good job. But doesn't always one person, whether it's male or female, end up liking the other one just a little bit more? Just a little bit more than the other one. That's a fairly awkward question considering our podcast here. I got to say, Jack. Is it? Okay, I'm, I'm going to cut this discussion very short. <laughs> Law of large numbers, it's possible, but it's also not possible. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. There, I don't know. I'm just saying there's definitely out there a group of guys and girls where maybe, yes, one of the girls like the guys a lot more. One of the girls or the guys like the girls a lot more. I think I flipped the two. I don't remember, but I'm going to pretend I did. Sure. And there are other groups out there where there are guys and girls and they both don't like each other in that way, but they both love hanging out with each other. That's just law of large numbers. Like both are equally probable. Maybe not yeah. equally, but I'm not going to do the statistics. I don't give enough of a fuck. Yes. Let people hang out with other people. <laughs> Just as people. Yes. Not as their genders. <laughs> Words of people. wisdom. Colin, you're so quiet right now. What's going on, man? I well, me? I mean, I was thinking I was just pondering your, your your question and I didn't I didn't want to interrupt anyone. I I mean, okay, so like I've definitely been in like some of my best friends over the years have been women, believe it or not. And I have been in situations where well, I have I have had one situation where I had one person who has friends who who was a woman that like we were friends for a while but then this person she developed feelings um and i was just like i'm sorry i just don't feel the same way but but it actually ended very well because we ended up being good friends afterwards she just it just she just kind of had to like she got over it and she was just like you know what i shouldn't let this get away in the way of our friendship and we've been friends ever since yeah my, yeah, my we worry- still talk to this day my worry cool. with believing in, oh, guys and girls can't be friends because they eventually will date or like each other, is that it creates this kind of toxic ideology of, sure, I'm friends with this person, but I'm not dating them only because of X, rather than I'm not dating them because I don't I don't like them that way. You know what I mean? It, it right? Cre- That's a weird heterosexual world. Yeah. Assumes that. It creates this toxic mentality of, like, I need a reason to not be dating this person. Otherwise, I can't be friends with them. Also, this episode is sponsored by Britney Spears because I'm pretty sure we have said toxic more than any other time. And that song <laughs> is enough of a bear. Oh, gosh, we don't have it copyrighted. We don't have copyrighted. So so to Colin's point, though, right? Like, I think it's a there's a difference between that scenario, right? Like, it was all, like, kind of laid out on the table, right? It was all kind of, like, made known. But I feel like danger lurks where people, like, sit on their feelings and they, like, you know, repress it. And then they just let it fester and then just there. And it's like an unspoken thing. So you I think like that's where every, the tent. What? You mean like every time Yui talks to someone? Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's like that's where that tension is. But I think in Colin's situation where he pointed out where it was like a known thing. It was all like everyone understands everyone's position. And then it's just discussed like rational adults and then diffused. Then I then in situations like that, I think that guys and girls can be just friends. But I do sadly think that's more the exception than the rule. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree because it's not like, you know, it, if it was just like any person, you know, any random person, you know, I don't think it that it would have ended that well. You know what I mean? Like, but it like since I've known this person for so long and we have like a history and all this stuff um then i would say like it, then that just makes a lot more sense and that we were able to to, to discuss things out and, and it ended up working so. colin you sound way too fucking sober what the fuck <laughs> i i would i just here's the thing though here's the thing you got to know about me when <laughs> you work at a brewery well in be, that that and beyond that is that when i get drunk i don't know if you know this this noticed this from previous experiences i constantly tell myself 
that all right you need to like shove this drunkenness out of your mind and try to speak the most coherently as possible it doesn't always work out because sometimes Col- the, Col- the drunk so when you're drunk is when you want to be talking to the cops is what you're saying colin you are <laughs> drinking 4.5 percent alcohol by volume fucking hard kombucha i don't want to hear it fucking kombucha, what the kombucha. Fuck? this is ha- this is pure whiskey in my glass right now what the fuck Good. are you talking Malayo about you motherfucker Good. Kombucha. All right, guys. I'm I'm getting more drunk as the minutes go. Guys, by. I have to pee. <laughs> well, go. I, have a problem. Okay, Colin, I'm gonna join you because I might not right. need to take Let's a go. time out. Robert, to, go. Yeah. Hurry up. Me and Robert are gonna hold the show down. Yeah, go. We're not cutting. We're gonna keep going. Oh, we're gonna go. All right. Yeah. we're gonna go. I'm gonna pee. It's me and Robert. Robert, I've been dreaming Hi. of this moment for a very long time. We've yeah, Daly talking. and Colin are the fucking worst, right? Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh, they're, they're so terrible. stupid. They're smelly Every time, too. Like I don't even understand how I can smell them from fucking how many zip codes away am I? I know, and they think they can speak Japanese. <laughs> like they can. I've heard when Japanese. It, I wish I, I wish Jelly could see this video again because I don't know if she realizes how many times she sticks her tongue out. <laughs> Drunk. She's one of those people. <laughs> the tongue's just blah. It's funny, man. Okay, man. We've been podcasting a long time. It's been two but years. we haven't though. We've been technically off air more than we have been on air, even though we've been recording. What do you mean <laughs> so off air? Long. We've been doing shows for years. Oh, you mean like over the years? Okay, I thought you meant just tonight. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're we're keeping this shit. By the way, we're not editing this. Oh, out. I, yeah, I know, I know. Okay, so so what what so this is our third drunk cast. Oh shit! How do you think this ranks? <laughs> So far, I think we've been having a lot of fun. There's been a lot of fun happening here tonight. And I also want to tell you guys at home, feel free to drink along with us unless you're driving or operating heavy machinery, in which case, yeah. don't. Please don't. But if yeah. you're sitting around enjoying, you know, a nice day at home, please feel free to drink some white hey. wine or some straight up kombucha, hard kombucha. Oh, yeah, if you're that, if you're that kind of guy. No, I mean, hey, this is the kickback with your Terrace House friends. We're going to have a good old time. This might be the last drunk cast we ever did. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm feeling pretty good, though. I'm feeling pretty good. It takes a lot to get me buzzed. Are you still? Are you in a good spot? I'm in a good spot. I'm in, I'm in a spot where I can at uh, least host enough. Hi, Colin. But okay. hi. Have fun. We're having fun. You guys ever get so drunk that when you walk to the bathroom, you start you start singing "One Step Closer" by Linkin Park? <laughs> Huh. Everything you say to me. Get it one step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. <laughs> a little, little rope to break. Get it one step closer to the edge. <laughs> and I'm about to break. I remember in 1999 when Hybrid Theory was the fucking <laughs> most bomb ass fucking album ever out there. It was like Limp Biscuit fucking who? Seriously, dude. They made right. Limp Biscuit look shitty. Jack, I'm calling you out. Earlier, when Daily started singing Toxic by Britney Spears, we were immediately like, oh, we don't have the copyright for that. We don't have the copyright and then for here, anything. You guys just went the whole fucking chorus for Listen. One Step Closer. <laughs> I would just like to say that Linkin Park was so fucking big when Hybrid Theory dropped that my dad got Chester Bennington's blue flame tattoo on his arm. Whoa, he got the Cholo flames? Dude, no shit. I'm not joking. Oh, yeah, you never got to he meet my dad. Them? Oh, dude, he has. Oh, I want to see that. He's like, yeah, he, did he definitely show, does. Did he show him an image? Look at the screen. Did he show him like an image of like Chester? Like I want this. I I don't listen. I was there when he got the tattoo. I must have been like seven, (laughs) maybe eight years old. I don't. Maybe a little bit older. Daily. What are you drinking? What's that in that bottle? Is that water? This is water that I'm drinking. (laughs) I need water. (laughs) How you feeling? You still got that other cider though. What did you say? I know it's still here. It's like seventy percent. Is that the fourth one? Yeah. Okay, Daly. I'm so sorry. We did not know what we were asking of you before. <laughs> we're not trying to ruin your home life. It's not going to ruin my home life. Okay. To be fair, I think this is the most raunchy we've all been on. Andrew okay. I'm not that yeah. raunchy. I'm singing fucking Linkin Park over here. Fair. But <gasps> Linkin Park. Sing more Linkin Park. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't. I don't. love no, Linkin no, no, Park. Don't ask them to. Like, listen to so it on your own on spot. Oh, God. No, please. You're letting this so happen. Far. Jack, stop. Please. In the end. In the end. Da- I'm so sorry, Internet. <laughs> Take us home, Robert. Why am I so pissed off? No, 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 no. I will edit you in post-production. Don't make me do that, Colin. 
All right, okay. Robert. So okay, so, so did we look, go around the table? Because only I think me and someone else shared our me and you, Robert, shared yeah, our favorite drunk yeah. moments. Yeah, Jack and I shared our favorite drunk moments on, on Terrace House. Colin or Daly, do you have any? If not, I will feel oh, free to move pick us one, on. Pick one, pick Damn. one, pick one. Uh, uh, right, um, uh, okay. Like it's technically in like the bonus scenes of, you know, um the after Terrace House on the YouTube channel. But Yui drunk. I can identify with so much. She's just wide and staring and so ready to touch scrotum hair, apparently. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Like, Yui's the mom of the show, but in uh, that moment, she's ready to be anything the moment demands of her. Ready to touch uh, ankle scrotum. Including up to stutching scrotum hair that is on an ankle. That dankle. Because. That dankle. dankle. That if you don't know what we're talking dankle. about, feel free to check out episode 19 of Tatai Ma, Terrace House Podcast. Oh, my gosh. So, show on Netflix. was she even drunk? Because I feel like she would have done it sober. She was so enthused. I think she was drunk, just the wide-eyed stare She's that like, she yes, had. Yes, I must <laughs> touch this hair on your ankle. The rustling. I must experience this. What's oh, that? Is that God. tea? I is, have coffee Is now. that hard kombucha? It's hard. <laughs> hard kombucha. Hard kombucha. <laughs> I'm Dude, not you like know, Colin. Y'all motherfuckers <laughs> know you want some now. All right. No, I don't. Colin, Colin I smelled I that shit. Do I don't. I <laughs> smelled it. You can it's smell not it from good. across the room. No, I he get like he poured some out before we started the podcast. He was like, smell this shit. And I'm like, Ugh, gross. <laughs> Colin, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite drunk moment? Do you have a favorite My, drunk moment? Wow. Drunk moment. Ooh. Come on. Mm. Drinking moment. Oh, I got, I got a bonus one. I got a bonus one. Beauty moment. Hold on. I, I so, fuck. When, uh, was it Ami's birthday when Taka shaved his mustache? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be one of them. Oh, that's Yoss. pretty good. That's That's got to be one of them. It was so cringe inducing for me, but at the same time, so memorable because of that. My favorite thing about it is that he didn't make a big deal. He just kind of like hid his face behind the cake. That's and not then, a big deal. Yeah, and no one talked about it. Like he didn't even say anything. And then someone else at the table said, "Did you shave your mustache?" <laughs> <laughs> then Ami was like, to this guy. "Ami was like, I don't know, man. Just see, she did not seem entertained by it. Oh no, she seemed embarrassed." Nope. Zoinks. Oh, toxic Ami. I'll never forget you. All right, Jack. I'm picking up my DVD player remote. I'm hitting bonus features. Okay, what do quick, you got? Quick bonus one. When Wes is doing, sorry, Daily, when Wes wow. is doing his Instagram song on Insta Aloha State, Gra. and fucking Tai Chi Insta is in the Gra. crowd, fucking jumping up and down like it's fucking. Oh, he is fucking. Dude, going he's hard, so dude. fanboying. Like, he's like, ah! dude, it's like it's like a, a fifth grade chick watching fucking Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's Tai Chi watching oh, Wes sing God. his Instagram song. He was fucking drunk. It wasn't even a good song. It's a terrible song. It's terrible. It's it, let's really just call not. it what it is, guys. No. Wes is not a good musician. But when Tai Chi did that, it was like one of the best drunk moments. And Yama called him out. And thank you, Yama. We love you. Oh, yeah. Yama is so Big good. Papa bless Yama. Same. All right. Let's talk about something that I'm really excited for, for talking about on this show. So if, you, if any of you follow video games, Battle Royales are a really big thing right now. Hold what on. You know? huh. Come by. Drink, motherfuckers. Drink. drink. Everybody drink. 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 So Battle Royale is a really big. Oh. 100 people on a map. Oh. Last Daily, person okay? standing wins. Daily, you don't look okay. I'm just saying. I'm okay. Okay. All right. I'm beautiful. Okay. Fuck you. I believe in you, Daily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beautiful. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so what I want to propose to the table wow. is for the... Uh, certain number of people that I haven't counted yet that have been on opening your doors, except for the final few people that we haven't seen in part uh, six. Who do we think would win in a legitimate bloodbath battle royale? Last person alive <laughs> wins. Are there weapons? Yui! 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 Hold on! Yui. Hold on. Yui. Fucking build up to Yui. it! Holy shit! Don't just burn. Okay. Blow your wad. I don't think I have to because <clears throat> Yui does what needs to be done. Yeah, that's true. She uh, does what needs to be done. We're just Whether picking winners. We're just laundry picking laundry 
or housework, I think Yui would put aside all kinds of friendship and pick up, you know, a spear <laughs> and do the work that needs to be done so that she can pursue her career in wedding planning. Is this like PUBG style or is this like Hunger Games style? Or so I, I say, it let's say be done. Let's say everyone starts some in a random location in the house, in the mansion. Oh, the in mansion, the house. In the mansions, the battle, the battlegrounds. Ooh. Well, Yui knows that best because she's oh, yeah. doing everyone's fucking laundry. Yeah, she's doing everyone's so. She's cleaned every corner of the house. She knows everything. Hmm. Who is my pick? Who is uh, my pick? I'm picking. My, oh, you're going? Okay, I got one. You better uh, take mine, gosh. I, let me, I'm I got gonna, mine. I'm going to... I think I have mine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna glance the roster real quick just to make sure I'm not missing it. I think I, I think man. <laughs> oh, this is really tense, up, man. Oh my god, you've built this up so much. I Shion. got mine already, dude. I'm gonna pick wow. Shion. What? That so motherfucker, listen. Lane your damn self. <laughs> listen. I I was gonna pick Taka because maybe he could just snowboard someone to death. Mm. But <laughs> I I picked Xion because I feel like that motherfucker has a nefarious side to him that that just doesn't get shown. I I think because he's Mister Smooth, you know, when dating Subasa and blah blah blah. But I think that if he wanted to be, he could kick the shit out of someone. Mm. Not I, Subasa, who makes a literal career of smacking the shit out of things. So on my the ice. fuck, you're right. My, my you guys are blades? fucking me up right blades. now. You're fucking me up right now. You're both fucking me up because I was gonna say fucking Subasa. You made your pick daily. You went with Yui. I did. So you fucking here, here's, picked. Here's the thing. For one, is Shion, by the way, how you pronounce his name. And two, <sighs> the reason that I kind of see <laughs> Colin's point of view here, okay, is I'm because drinking. fuck this. Because <laughs> I think I agree with both with Daily and Jack here that that Subasa is a fucking powerhouse. She's clearly the most athletic, most powerful person in Terrace House, opening you doors. However, I don't think she could kill the man she loves, but I think Shion could kill the woman he loves. I fucking t could not disagree more, dude. She would fucking get him rear naked choke and just be like, oh, yeah, that's true. Wow, well, she fucking chokes <laughs> go to the sleep, life go to sleep, out of his skeleton. No, 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 no. Sleep. Out of his I'm saying tiny was the word visage of a male physique that he calls his body. No, I'm saying the flip. I think Shion could sh could do it to her, but I don't think she could kill him. I fucking think she's experienced death in her life, dude. She's That's she's true. gone through death. She's experienced what? the death of her mother. She's comfortable with losing loved ones. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's so oh, Jesus rude. Christ, she's okay. Fucking, <laughs> That's so rude. Not comfortable. Fuck you, Jack. <laughs> Not comfortable, but she's experienced it. What? We're fucking battle royale daily. You fuck me this like is battle royale. Is battle the fucking death. Are you fucking fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yes. Okay. However, I do want to make cases for two people. One, Sota, because I'm pretty sure he's a robot and is therefore indestructible. He's there for I'll research. He'd that. hit somebody with his laptop. He he'd smother oh. somebody with his laptop at night. No, he would yes. he would find the new glasses he needs to buy and then like break the lenses and use the glasses to like cut people. <laughs> And two, I want to make an argument for Io because he's a fucking soccer player. Yeah. Like, sure, he was a bench warming soccer player, but he still got the physique, man. Right in the pine. Yeah, he could head kick a dude. Oh, yeah. And put him out. And he's got the range. He's got those long limbs. I agree with that. Yep. I think, but dude, wouldn't you love, I fucking, I'm not even joking. Wouldn't you fucking love to see Io and Tsubasu fight? <laughs> Holy shit, I would fucking like to see that. Fight. Fight, Ayan Subasa fight. would be some shit. Like fucking Mortal mixed Kombat. martial arts type fucking just like throw let her down grapple the octagon. Him. Yeah, let her grapple oh him. Dude, God. fuck that. She'd get him in a fucking triangle. I mean, I'd still believe she would win every time. I I have a lot is. of a belief in Subasa's capabilities. Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can you tell it's a drunk cast yet? <laughs> can I can I throw can I throw a coin at Ami? Because I think Ami is cold hearted killer. Um, she's one of the she first can, to go. I don't know, man. I think she'd no, be I'm like here. she gets a knife and she fucking goes. I'm here for it. She'd I feel like, like she's the she's the type that kills people in their sleep. Oh yeah. She'd be like DPS Dude. agility, right? She has to get behind you and like crit you. 
But if she's head on, there's no way Ami's doing nothing. Mm. Assassin. She could assassinate, yeah. though. She she's could get assassin. in. She could use her feminine wiles to seduce the men and then mm. fucking just like praying mantis that shit, like bite their heads off. Lady she killer. don't got to do any effort. This, these men be like, oh, she cute, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the whole season one of Terrace House. It's just Ami being there and people being like, oh, she's really cute. I'm going to ask her on a date. And then she's too awkward to say no. So then she goes on the date. She has friends yeah, because with she eye doesn't patches. have a personality. Guys, guys, she has friends with eye patches. Fuck you, Colin. Don't fuck big, with Ami. Big the burger. Big of, yeah, I'm bagel. probably going to get murdered That's now. That's a burger. Big of burger. Big of burger. Right. Oh, that so I, really I need good right now. <laughs> same. So I need to ask: Does anyone think Santa has a chance? She's got no. the she's got the well, wine bottles yes. at hand. She's got the wine bottles no. at hand. Sharp glass is a mm. factor. She would be like Santa's nah, going to manipulate whoever's the strongest. Yeah, and she's going to be like, "Oh, protect me." Noah's yeah. pretty strong, but I kind of see I kind of see Noah as a also ran. Like I just feel like he hasn't faced any adversity. I don't think he can like tough it out. I think he's a quitter. He's gonna throw money. I think I Noah. Problem. I think Noah's a tapper. I think he's a quitter. I don't see any fight in him, so I don't see him. See, I really don't see him coming to the rescue of Santa. I see him kind of like I, running away. I think Noah would have the bravado where like maybe you'd bet on him before the match starts, but the second it starts, he's just like dead, like no question. Hey guys, we are back <laughs> and we are having a good time. Some might say a little bit too good of a time. So Daly actually, funny enough, had to punch out. She had to clock out for the rest of the episode. But damn it, the old school TDP boys are here. Colin and Robert and <laughs> your boy Jack. And we're going to finish this out. And I know that we had some questions, some comments you guys wanted us to discuss for our 21st episode drunk cast. Katie Sirico. Don't you live in Australia? I think she does. I believe she does. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Katie. Hey. So she, so we were asking, we were soliciting and throwing it out there, right? Throwing the feelers out there. What do you guys want us to discuss on a drunk cast such as this? And so, damn it, if we're not going to address that, Katie Sirico, this is your topic that you requested. Robert, I'm throwing it to you, buddy. Hi. Hello. I just want to point out, we've been recording for damn near two hours. Oh. And I'm pretty sure the final file isn't near that. But damn. Damn. I'm, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm, I gotta do so much editing, either when I'm drunk or sober. I haven't decided yet, but man, guys, so drink right now, drink, come pie, motherfuckers, come on. I only yeah. have like a shot of gin and tonic left. Damn it, happy twenty first. So KT Sadiko at KT Sadiko says, "I want you guys to muse over stories that would happen if the hosts entered the house, the way they get carried away and do about the members." laughing emoji will yamachan ask every girl out on a date or will he try to get them to bitch about each other then tell them to start a fight and That's... i'm going to tell you this now he would be a puppet master of the most oh, divine scary, level yes katie that's that's funny that you bring that up because as soon as you posed your question i was like yama's gonna ask every single woman on a date and then there you said it <laughs> Yeah, that is he, my dude, exact thought he, process. He jokes about like preying on their insecurities when they're like vulnerable. He says that multiple times, like they're vulnerable now. I need to go there <laughs> and ask them out. Like, dude, that's a predator ass shit. See, I think it's different. I think because I mean, maybe it's because he's been a ho a panelist for so long, right? But I think he would instead of saying he'd prey on people, just in the boys' room, his discussion would be, "Hey." You need to prey on this girl because oh of gosh. her insecurities, <laughs> and I need to see this chaos unfold. Yama must be stopped, man. He is an evil force. He is my favorite panelist, by the way, and he's the one Same. I most personally identify with myself, but he, he's scary, man. I wouldn't want him around my you know, little sister or daughter or anything like that. What's that to say about his character? See because to me, I think it'd be Tokui. I think Tokui would be the one who would ask every girl out. He would be the mm -hmm. Uchi from Boys and Girls in the City. Mm -hmm. But Yama would easily be like the mastermind. Like, you know, dance my puppets, dance. Yeah, he'd like, be he'd the be puppet master. Guy. Yama, I totally agree with that. And I think Tokui would be kind of like the funny guy, right? I feel yeah. like Tokui would struggle. He would use humor. 
to attract people, but I feel like he would struggle to breach the friend zone. I mm. really think with Toku in Toki's case. Can we switch to the girls now? Yeah. So Tori Chan, I would love to see her in the house. I would love to because she see to me of every one of the panelists, Tori Chan seems like the one that is most like the people that live in the house, like the ones that get picked to live in the house. She seems to fit the mold kind of. If that makes sense. Maybe she's yeah, a model I would actress. Agree. I don't know. I would definitely agree with that. I think that, I think that you and um, oh my gosh, how am I forgetting her name? Baba. Uh, Baba San. Baba Zono. Yeah, Baba Zono. Uh, I I think that like I don't know. I think they're a little bit um, what's the word? A little bit too stoic, I guess. You know, I I think I think that uh. I think that Tori Chan fits fits the bill a lot closer than many of the other hosts. Man, well, okay. So, so, so the way I see it, I think Tori would be a lot like Ami, except for like at that moment when Taka shaves his beard, Tori would be straight up like, "Oh, did you think that would make you look younger? Like it doesn't." Oh damn! <laughs> like she'd be straight up you like, "Oh so? savage, see, yeah, oh know, yeah, dude." I don't know. I she's kind of to- going that direction. I'm just saying. She just she she's has- kind of going there. She has a straightforward streak to her. Like I definitely give you that. But to me, I don't know. She Tori John always seemed like kind of the hopeless romantic type. Like she's there mm. for love. She's there for romance. She's there to be to be chased. I, I think she would only be into either Hansan or yeah. Sota before he opened his mouth. Mm, like so many other girls <laughs> that are disappointed by Sota. You know what? Maybe yeah. it's good he doesn't know his kid. Because maybe his kid would just be disappointed too. Like, damn, you're my so dad. Like, See, I would love to see you on the show because I think oh you gosh. would be – she would be Sana on crack. She would be the yeah. most straightforward. Like, she would call everyone out on their bullshit like, hey, Noah, stop being a fucking bitch and go to work. <laughs> She'd be on them young bucks, I feel like. I don't know why. I feel like you would be like the – what's the word again? The cougar? She'd be the, the cougar. cougar. She'd yeah. be oh, yeah. cougar. 100%. She'd be preying on them young sons. Young sons. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and Baba, I... it's tough, right? Because Baba is like really quiet on the panel, but then when she says something, it is something. It is like you remember it, and yeah. it is so powerful. Who do you see Baba if she were to go on a date? Who do you see her dating that's been on opening new doors? I kind of got my pick in my head, but I'll let you guys go first. You know, it, it's it's so hard to say because. When Baba says something, it usually is pretty funny, and she usually only chimes in at certain times. But I feel like, I feel like we know her the least out of most of the panelists, and I, you- I think we've we've talked about this before in a past episode. Uh, so it, it's it's kind of hard for me to judge based on those just tidbits to really gauge. Have you seen that clip of Baba Zona going around Reddit? <laughs> Uh, which is one of my favorite sources for Terror House News, by the way. But um, where she's like grabbing that one muscular Japanese guy's thighs. <laughs> Have you mm-hmm. seen that? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. That gif is so good. She's just like, I don't know. She just hams it up it's in such a perfect way that only she can. But, okay, my dark horse pick. If Baba Zona were to live in the house, I see her having some strange, maybe unforeseen connection with Shohei, believe it or not. I can see that somehow. They seem like a compatible couple. I don't know if Shohei would go for her. I'm not sure. But I think that mm-hmm. I, there's some weird there's some weird vibes I'm getting from what I know of their personalities. What do you guys think? See, to me, I don't think Baba would ever like I feel if there's if she ever ends up with someone on the show, she would be settling for them. Because she is too good. Oh, any damn. guy that has been on the show. Really? And that's just like, that's her personality. You know, she acts like she's really? kind of watching over everything and will comment on something when it's like, this needs to be addressed and no one's addressing it. So I'm going to be the one. See, I feel like she has a self-esteem issue. I feel like maybe not. She hasn't been approached enough with that. Maybe she doesn't have enough experience with dating. I don't know. I feel this weird like uh, Princess Diaries thing with her complex. In a way where she just is too shy. I don't know. Maybe I'm just projecting. <laughs> yeah, no, but I feel I, I, I feel think, like her and Shohei could have a thing. That's my. That's where my money is. I think it'd be that she would say yes to whoever asks her out, but not because like she's desperately waiting for it, but just because it's like, yeah, let's see if this is fun or not. I don't give a shit. Let's go. Let's see. 
Hmm. Awkward silence. Uh, you got anything, Colin? <laughs> Go, Colin. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I, I could see like Baba Zono. Does anyone know how old she is? I'm guessing after older than 25, but younger than like 32, 33. Yeah, I, I could oddly enough, like if Taco was still on the market, maybe. Because they're kind of in the same age range. Whoa. And she, oh. Baba yeah. Zono and Taka? Maybe. Really? Maybe. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. I, though, I feel like she would go for someone that's a little bit more... A little bit more zany, maybe. Maybe a little zany. bit more... out, Like, like a little bit more uh, outward with their personality. Uh, just for a heads up, she is, I believe, 38. Damn! What? Really? 38. 38. Baba Zona holding it down, lady. Nice job. Yeah, I... Hmm. What What if? What if, though, her and Shohei? Like... <laughs> That's where I'm leaning. I don't know. Or Shion, if he yeah. never gets to Subasa. I'm not sure. But I feel what? It. Yeah. Colin, say I, a sentence. Holy fuck. <laughs> no, you were breaking up on me, so I was like, I can't tell if you were saying things. Okay. <laughs> uh, her and Shohei, I'm trying to picture what that would look like because Shohei is Mr. Like, I, you know, I'm a singer guy. I'm like, you know, I'm looking for that super hot, you know, really kind of fantastical, almost sort of love, love thing going on, you know, and I think he was trying to look for that really hard with Sena and... I don't know if he's going to get that with Baba Zono. I think she's she's a little bit too down to earth. Mm. Guys, the, the name escapes me. What's the name of the fifth chair right now? The boy band chair. I'm a little uh, too buzzed remember. to remember. Yeah, there are so many. Anyways, the easy underhand answer there is, of course, Sana. Sana's in the Robin the Cradle kind of mode. She's into them young bucks. And so I feel like Sana would be with the fifth chair boy band slot. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and that's like just easy, like duh, low hanging fruit. Like, there's really nothing else to say there to that. Yeah, and then I mean, have we gone over? Yeah, we went over Tokui. I think Tokui would be the one who asked everyone out, right? He'd be like, he's at an all you can eat buffet. He's gonna try everything. He's gonna be the one that's like, hey, you want to go to Costco? And they're gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm trying to ask you on a date no we can go with everybody it's fine we got a big car they can all fit <laughs> yeah i think it would be it would be really awkward if if all of the hosts were in the house because i tokui especially has been so forward about how he acts in relationships mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and he's very um self-deprecating and yeah. so it it would just it would just be really weird to see him in kind of that dating mode where like because he the, I don't know that it's just really weird talking about the host in general, I guess, because it, it's it's really weird to think about them thinking of each other. Like, you know, you heard about breaking the, you heard about breaking the fourth dimension. What dimension are, is fucking being broken when the last episode of Terrace House? I hope it never comes. But what that one day when it does come, we're all the panelists the commentators go into the house and have a big cum pie with everyone living there. What dimension is being broken there? The eighth. Seriously, like the fucking, you have to break out fucking string theory, fucking quantum mechanics to figure that shit out. There's going to be singularity, the whole thing. But like, you know what I mean? Like that's going to be a cool scene. And I am not wanting, trust me guys, my podcast career kind of depends on Terrace House (laughs) being a thing. (laughs) But I don't want that day to come. But like that's gonna be a cool ass scene. That's gonna there's gonna be some man tears rolling. It it would be. I don't think anyone would ask anyone out though, right? Because usually by the end of a series, the couples have been set, right? No one's looking for more love. So I don't think unless anyone's super ballsy, Yama. Would if ask anyone does it, it's Yama. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Yama will and prey on the, the prey on the uh, what's it called? The weak. But the thing is, I think if Yama did ask someone out, it would be like, oh, that was just a joke. Ha ha You're so funny, Yama. And then Yama would play it off like, oh, oh yeah, that, that was just a joke. Ha ha. I'm so silly, right? Ha ha ha. Yeah, and then he whisper but, off like, motherfuck. Yeah. yeah. It's like, motherfucker, damn it. And then he's going to go talk about it on Yama channel. Exactly. Yes.
Yes. Yeah. But, but yeah, so it's so a long story short. I think Yama's the puppet master. He would make everyone else ask each other out and then laugh and and enjoy the chaos he's created because that's all he is. He's a monster who feeds off chaos, and that's why we all love him. And he's I like the him. Joker of the panel. Exactly. Thank you for being you, Yama. Uh, yeah, he's so man. good. He's my favorite. He's such a sweet, young, evil man. Okay, I think it's time for us to wrap up and all go take naps because we're all very drunk. Yes, daily. I hope you're okay. Uh, hey, thanks to Jonathan for sending in an email to us over the. Uh, I mean, this is probably coming out pretty far out, but it was about two weeks ago where he sent us an email, and uh, we just want to pass the for- pass forward the information that he told us. So, uh, hey, believe it or not, the panelists in the very first season and Boys and Girls Next Door, with none of us have covered yet. Maybe we might in the future. Who knows? But the very first season of Terrace House believe it or not, was started by just you in a limo doing the whole panelist gig and then slowly kind of built up to be the panel that we know today. Like one person was added, then the next week another person was added, and so on. Robert, was she drunk? Hi. Was she drunk? I don't know, but we are. And probably this wasn't <laughs> the best week to say, hey, thanks for the email. But for for real, <laughs> sincerely, thank you so much for that email. That was really cool to see. Yeah. Uh, I remember we talked about it. I don't remember if it was on or off air, but you know what? Now it's official. It has been on air. It is in your podcast feeds. We are telling you the, the show didn't start with the panel we all know and love. But you know what? Damn it. It grew into the panel we all know and love. I would love. I think it would be fascinating to go back and watch those. I hope there's some area where we on the internet somewhere we can watch them with english subtitles so we can understand it but that sounds fascinating sure. to me yeah um for but sure. no thank you for to everyone like reaching out via comments via whatever channel and sending us emails if there's any emails you guys want us to read on the show robert what's the email address uh it's questions at terrace house podcast.com um and also i just want to make sure that we thank katie sarico you know you've been awesome on Twitter and the fact that you reached out to us gave us that really awesome question that we all kind of like, I love that question. It's such a good one. So thank you so much for that. Um, also just a little bit of news while we're all definitely not sober enough to talk Uh-oh. about it. Hey, Uh-oh. Terrace house, Tokyo confirmed 2019 what? to 2020. What the fuck? Motherfucker? What are you talking about? Terrace house, Tokyo. What are you talking about? Why did you tell earlier? Oh my God. Calm down. So Sorry. is it literally just called Terrace house, Tokyo? When the fuck that- did this come out? It came out on Twitter earlier today. Well, Motherf- last week. <laughs> last week? Okay, holy shit. Terrace House Tokyo confirmed in, on Netflix? Well, I mean, I'd assume it's going to be on oh, Netflix. Oh, shit, going guys. On. We're doing another motherfucking show. Oh, yeah, it's going to happen, Tana baby. Tanabas going to keep fun. going. And hey, 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 fun fact. You know what else is happening in Tokyo in 2020? Uh, the Summer Olympics. The fucking Olympics. And I'm going to Tokyo after the Olympics when rates are cheap. Fucking oh come. shit, fam! I'm doing a fan signing for Tadaima fans. <laughs> <laughs> in, oh in my Tokyo. god! You do the English version of the fucking Terrace House podcast. We love you guys so <laughs> at, much. At oh, the Virgin, you know, at the Virgin Mega Store. Remember when those were a thing? <laughs> you know, I didn't even think about that. How many Japanese podcasts do you think there are about Terrace House? I'm doing it at Super Potato. Let's do this. Oof. But yeah, hey, so just so you know, our show has legs. We've got another oh. season of Terrace House to cover after opening your doors. Oh, damn, that. dude, how can you drop a bomb like that at the fucking end? I didn't know that shit. Uh, I don't think we have a ter- discussion question this week because we're all pretty drunk. Yeah, but what hey, are you drinking? That's our discussion question. Yeah, you know what? Let us know on Facebook, on our Facebook group, Tadima Clan. Search Tadima Clan, you'll find us. Uh, just let us know one of us will let you in with open, open arms and warm alcohol drenched open arms. And uh, just let us know what you're drinking this week. What what do you like drinking? What's your favorite go-to drink? I recommend Uh, Japanese whiskey. Oh, same. Uh, Let's see. We've already gone through the email. So I guess tune in next Monday for another episode of Tadaima Terrace House Podcast. We promise you it will probably be very sober. Like maybe extra sober to compensate. for Somber, maybe some might say. Somber. Yeah, we're going to sell you on a very somber episode. Tune in next week for that. (laughs) This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itadakimasu! Itadakimasu! 
email us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at Tadaimagram and on Twitter at Tadaimapod. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast. Yeah, you know that moment when you're like washing your hands and you like make eye contact with yourself in the mirror and you just yes. realize I'm drunk as yes. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, I know that feeling. Like, oh. That just happened. Oh. Oh, what's you? What's your response? <laughs> Oh, Zach sh- says he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your cat's name again, Jack? Consent. Your name, your cat's name is Consent. Consent. Hey, <laughs> and consent is sexy. Consent. Consent is sexy, guys. No, cassette, like a little tape cassette, like a little, you know, tape. <laughs> That's what your cat's name is? Cassette. Yeah, like, you know, like a little tape cassette, cassette? like a single. Yeah. Listen, if you want to have sex with me, you have to give me consent. <laughs> oh. No, I mean The cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> Daily. I, it's, I, my cat has the cutest name in the world. Don't make fun of my cat. Yeah, She's if gorgeous. I ever got a cat, I'd probably name her Trinket. That's a great oh, name for a I cat. I know, right? <laughs>